Hi, I'm Chantella, producer here with Shaw TV. Tonight we're here to discuss City Embers, a film made by the youth unit of the Boyle Street Community Services. I'm joined by Sebastian Barrera, a high-risk youth worker and the producer of the film. Sebastian, why don't you start with telling us what Boyle Street is? So Boyle Street is a nonprofit organization who work with homeless people in Edmonton. Uh, we serve more than 12,000 people every year. Um, and I'm honored to work at the youth unit community services. So. Um, yeah, that's what Bully Street does. Okay. Um, and why don't you tell us a little bit about the film and how it got made? So, big part of the film, we discussed several times with the um, workers and the youth, how can we uh, create new ways to develop um, voice for the youth. We work with uh, youth who most of the time, their opinions, their thoughts, their ideas never uh, come to the table. Uh, so how can we develop a process that use um, can use in order to speak to our communities? So part of the process is we start doing a mural project. Um, we finish the mural project and then what is next? Um, I discussed with Rylan Kafara, a really uh, amazing worker on downtown Edmonton. And under those discussions, we say, what not a film? Um, so we started looking for funding. Edmonton Arts Council got a grant. We apply for the grant and finally we get the grant to start developing the film. Um, I invite Taro Hashimoto as the director of the film and little by little we start developing our crew and group to work towards uh, developing a film. When we came over with this idea with the youth and say, hey, we're ready, we get the funding, let's develop this film. The youth like, was a little bit sceptic and say, what, we develop a film? And little by little, um, we start putting pieces together and we were able to develop CT Embers. So what was the first step? I think the first step was discuss what we're gonna do. I think maybe the first step was get the grant and then after that, what we're gonna do and how we're gonna do it. Uh, we developed several discussions with the workers and the youth and started thinking about how can we do this one in a meaningful way, honoring their, our youth stories. Um, honoring their personal lives and develop a process of healing through arts and that's how City Embers is. So you speak about healing through art, um, what do you mean by that and what were you hoping to accomplish with this film? I think it wouldn't, um, there's a lot of trauma and there's a lot of history related to our homeless uh, people in Edmonton. We're talking about residential schools, we're talking about, about transgenerational trauma, we are talking about so many issues related to take the voice out of the community and tell them that they're not good enough, their voice is not important. Returning that voice to people who are marginalized and people who most of the time their voice have never been heard is part of the elements of healing. When you imagine a kid who has been told all the time, your voice is not good enough, don't speak, don't tell, you are not important, you are producing harm and uh, psychological problems, and you are producing so much pain in somebody who can, are not allowed to, to say what they think. So we are returning the voice to the community that process is a healing process. When we are respecting and honoring um, their opinions, that is a healing process because you are allow them to tell what is happening inside and express it freely mm -hmm. to the community. Okay. And um, obviously you made the film with some high-risk youth. What were some of the obstacles you guys faced? Well, there's uh, different obstacles. First of all, make them believe create that hope, create that space when they were safe, in a safe space. Um, and Tara was amazing to bring that to the table. Um, and also the kids start with feeling comfortable and develop a relationship to each other and with workers. A relationship that would never be possible under other kind of circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, we start setting up uh, meetings, pizza party, talking about what are we doing here, listening to other people's stories, and understanding what each of us come from. Like I share personal stories, Taro share personal stories in an horizontal level when everybody on that team was equal, was not a professional dealing with a youth, mm -hmm. was everybody working together towards the same goal. And that is what makes City Embers a kind of unique process through uh, other approaches that happens on Bull Street. Like we develop a brand new way to work with our youth and that uh, it shows so much respect and honor for their knowledge, what they're capable to bring to the table. Um, 
what the discussions that we have with the youth were amazing. We have so many, many, so meaningful discussions about residential schools, about missing and murdered Aboriginal women, about what is the society that we want to bring to the table and what are the changes that we're looking for. And that's what City Embers made. The process behind City Embers was so powerful. And it, maybe a lot of people will not see that process, never. Mm -hmm. But the people who experienced this process, I think we were all agree on what the process was about. And you can see the changes in our youth when they're, they feel like, we have kids who didn't have housing. Like after eight hours of shooting, we was dropping kids on, on, on homeless shelters. And say, uh, in calling the homeless shelters all the time, saying, wow. "Hey, can my kid sleep there tonight? Because like he has been shooting until 11 o'clock at night, and I know he lost the time, but we need a bed for him." Uh, and little by little, shelters and other organizations start. We're like, "Okay, yeah, of course, Sebastian." Yeah, and little by little, those relationships with other organizations and people who are willing to help these kids who are trying to make changes in their lives came through. So really quickly, we're running out of time. Yeah. Um, what do you hope people will learn from this film? I think what I hope people will learn that all our youth, uh, doesn't matter where they come from and who are living on, on, on the streets of Edmonton, have so many, to, so much to say, have so much inside of them that they are uh, want to talk to our community. And City Ember is an example, and you can a little bit have a taste of what their life has been and what can be the future if we all work together towards uh, those elements in society to allow our youth to speak, allow our youth to showcase what they are capable to do with the right directions, with the right people working next to them in an horizontal level, honoring and respecting what they can bring to the table. All right, thank you so much for joining us, Sebastian. When we come back, we'll be joined by Vicky Moses, who plays Dawn in the film. Uh, we'll see you after this break. But you don't understand, I, I, really, I really need my mother. Welcome back. We're joined with Vicki Moses, who plays Dawn in the film. Vicki, why don't you start with telling us a little bit about um, your involvement with the film and kind of your history leading up to the film. Yeah, um, so um, I was raised in foster care um, since the age of three uh, until I was 18 when I was, um, um, I phased out of care. Um, and then from then I was renting off of people and then fortunately became homeless so that, that is when I started going to Boyle Street and accessing the resources that they have there. And, and if you don't mind talking about that, um, what was your time being homeless like? Um, it, was, it was really hard um, to go from uh, foster care to getting almost everything I could have ever wanted to having nothing at all. So it was a very hard transition, tran transition that way. Um, you know, I was I was very successful in foster care. I went to school. I graduated. Uh, unfortunately, I was not supported throughout that transition that led to my homelessness. And so, is that an issue that a lot of homeless youth find um, that transition? Yes, yes. Um, I'm I'm from Shored Park, and I've made a lot of a lot of friends because I know in school you learn who the foster kids are really fast and. Most of the, my friends who were from in foster care, I've seen and met on the streets. So it's quite sad. And so when working on this film, what was that experience kind of like for you? And what was it like kind of bringing these issues to light that you'd been dealing with for so long? It really brings um, what it's really like to live through things and to, and to know. Like you hear stories, but it's one thing to hear something and actually see it happen. So I think that was really neat how they did that um, in film. And how did you get along with the rest of the crew? Um, we got along really great. It was it was like uh, we're all family, so like we all, you know, we all greet each other. We we have that bond, which is nice. And was um, getting into film something you had always kind of thought about, or was this kind of you know? just out of nowhere you decided to get involved with this? Um, no, um, no, it was not something like, I was like, oh, I'm gonna go do this. No, it was actually the opportunity arose and I was like, okay, that sounds cool. That sounds fun. Um, to be honest, I didn't actually think it was ever gonna happen. Um, so it, it's funny how that all worked out. It's quite amazing, actually. 
And so your character, Dawn, um, sort of mirrors your struggles in real life. Did you um, work on, with the script writing, or were you involved in that process? Or? Yes, we yeah. were all involved in the process. It wasn't, it wasn't script, like nothing was, was in stone and nothing was scripted. It was basically we went as we we go we went we went as we go, <laughs> and we we did and said but we seemed fit, which was really nice. Uh, our director Tara was very lenient and very understanding that way. So like a lot of the things that you see in the film was our own, which is nice. And what do you hope people will learn from your story when watching the film? Um, I hope people learn um, that, I hope people learn about intergenerational trauma and people actually understand and, and educate the, themselves about the residential schools and about the history of the Aboriginals. Um, I hope people really open their eyes to know that this isn't our fault. We didn't choose to become homeless. We didn't choose this way of life. It unfortunately chose us. And although I am one of, even though I am a success story, there's so many people out there who have lost, who are lost, and it, it's quite sad. And so I hope people understand that what we do is we wanna bring hope to a very unfortunate situation. Um, and last question before we wrap up, um, you've since uh, the movie was released, you've written a book of poetry yes. uh, that you have with you right now. Do you want to just talk really quickly a little bit about that? Yes. Um, so my book of poetry, I've been writing poetry for as long as I can remember. Um, and I've, I've always written how I feel. So the, the book is called, or entitled, From Truth to Words, um, because I feel a very strong connection to my words, and therefore it is truth because of the emotions that I put into my writing. Um, the book um, itself, um, the, the poetry stems from anywhere from uh, myself going through domestic abuse to being homeless, to finding hope, to losing hope, um, to new relationships, to new friendships, So, which is, which is good. Thank you so much for your time, Vicki. And when we get back, we'll be joined by Bobby Nakaho, who plays Andrea in the film. Uh, we'll be back right after this. Welcome back. We're joined with Bobby Nokoho, who plays Andreas in the film. Uh, welcome, Bobby. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Why don't we start with talking a little bit about you? Well, I guess you could say I'm a mother. I have five girls. Well, going to be five girls, and I'm pregnant again. And oh, congratulations. I, thanks. <laughs> I actually went through this process since last year, so it was actually pretty good to get into this because I didn't really believe that it was going to happen. So I was like, okay. So I decided to do it. Awesome. And um, your character in the film, uh, what's the story with that? Um, she, I guess she's supposed to be like really pushy and kind of mean, but I couldn't do that because like pretty much my personality just showed through and everything. So it was, it will try to be serious and not so funny. It was, she's pretty good. Like, I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so um, you yourself, was there a time when you were homeless? Yes, in that movie I was homeless in the process of getting housing, but I couldn't get housing. So it was pretty hard doing that while you're pregnant. And also trying to keep like everything stable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was pretty hard, but I got through with it. And um, so a little bit about how did you um, come to be homeless? I was like, I don't know, like my past has been pretty bad with the drugs and drinking. And then when I realized I was pregnant, I just quit everything and actually started becoming sober, volunteering my time at the Boyle Street and the youth unit there, cleaning up and everything and trying to pass time. And then I was seeing this as an opportunity. So I went and grabbed it and 
I wasn't too sure if I was supposed to be in the part or not because before me there was another actor and it was a male and he wasn't able to do it anymore so they asked me that's how I got this role too. Okay and um, while you were making the film you said you were at the time homeless um, what was that like? It was pretty hard because like sometimes you can't sleep in when you really want to sleep in when like, you're really tired that quick waking up really early too in the mornings just to go to other places yeah and then finding housing is not the greatest especially when they know that you're aboriginal as well as homeless and your source of income and everything's not the greatest so they look down at you before you can even put an application in or anything so it was pretty hard trying to actually find affordable housing while being pregnant and homeless but it was actually easy when you got like supports and that from Boyle Street. They helped out a lot. Okay, so um, when making this film, what do you hope that the film will kind of teach people and change attitudes about um, Aboriginal youth and homelessness? Try to have them to get an open mind about everything and not being so like judge judging and everything like that. Cause like it's bad enough that we're like everybody sees us and they think that we're already a bad influence because we're either drunk all the time, getting high all the time, or even being homeless. And then we get looked down at that. And then it's like, it's not really right to judge them before you get to know them and everything and where they came from. And I'm hoping that this movie has helped them to kind of see on how they got that way. And like, with everything else too. All right, well, thank you so much, Bobby, for telling your story and for being here with us today. Um, and thank you to everyone at the Boyle Street Community Services. This film is amazing. Um, if you wanna learn more, visit boylestreet.org. And um, stay tuned, we're gonna be showing the film. People that are homeless get put down.
Shame because they have addiction and problems. The system takes pity on those that are not trying, while those who are trying to make change in their life are punished. That's the corruption. Storm. What's going on? I haven't seen you in a while. I've been around. Stuff's been happening. What do you need from me? Why are you here? Well, I went back to the group home and, I don't know, as you know, my bed's been closed, but my stuff is still there and... If you'd been around even a week earlier, we would have been able to do something about it. I don't know. What happened? Well, I don't know, as you know, like, I, I had a relapse. I mean, I feel like shit about it. I really do. I feel like shit for missing the visits. I miss her. I miss her a lot. I mean, I need her in my life. I get that. I hear what you're saying, but you've said it before, and it's getting harder to support you. You're getting close to the age where support for you is going to get cut off. I need my daughter in my life. I mean, like, this time I really feel like I'm really ready to make a change. Like, I went to ADAC, I made appointments. I mean, I'm out there, I'm doing stuff, I've been clean. I gotta stick my neck out for you to be able to get you help, and there's so many other people that need help. Why do I need to stick my neck out for you? What's different this time? You know what, it, I'll just do it myself. Hope. Family and children always give hope no matter what life throws at you. Yeah, that sounds good. You know what? I'll get back to you in about an hour. I've just got someone in my office, all right? Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Hey, Miss Dawn. How are things going? Things are going well. Thank you. Okay. Well, I've got a bit of bad news for you today. Okay. Um, foster family that I placed you with isn't really working out. What? I don't understand. I thought things were going well. Um, they've kind of had a few issues with your smoking, your drinking, and your outbursts. They're just not prepared and they don't know how to deal with those kind of things, so... I, I don't understand. I thought things were going well. This is... We're going to have to look for an alternative. We've got a group home. There is a young lady that hasn't shown up for about 10 days. Okay. So they've told me that you can have that spot if she doesn't come back. What about my mother? What about what about my mother? Oh, sweetheart, you you know that that's been a few years. Like we we don't. Yeah, but you could find her. I know. I know you can. I know you have to understand and accept that maybe mom's. We won't find mom. But you don't understand. I I really I really need my mother. I know. I, I do understand, actually. I understand that you need your mom. I just don't think that we're gonna find your mom, honey. But you gotta find her. You, you gotta. It's, it's, you just gotta. Listen to me, Dawn. I can assure you that everybody is trying their best and doing but everything. But this is so unfair. I know. You know what, maybe we can think of something right now that can help you, help you to maybe move forward a little bit. Maybe you could write your mom a letter. Sometimes we put things out to the universe and the universe answers us. So do you think maybe writing a letter might help? Possibly. Let's try writing a letter. Okay, can we do that? Yeah. Okay, then let's do that. Let's write a letter. I think that would be really helpful. I think that would take you to the next step. time for this bull Yeah, my daughter will pick it up at 6 o'clock. Don't make it. 
you know who I am? No. So don't f me. I don't have time for this bullshit. So my daughter will pass for that stuff at six o'clock, and don't make her wait. If not, I will go for you. You got it? You got it? Okay. Better. Yeah, that's what I like. So the f will make it six o'clock. Yeah, I will call her right now. So it looks like we're having fun, eh? Hey, wake up, girl. Why are you up? Let's have a few drinks. <laughs> Just a couple of drinks? You were sleeping on the table and you know that's my f***ing room. No? Do you know how I hate that you drink that from? That's my f***ing bottle. I'm f***ing tired of you doing that. This one tastes the best. Yeah, I know that it tastes the best, but you don't mix that with Coke to drink it by yourself. You're losing money there, you know? I like it better this way. Yeah, but for that way, use all the f***ing rum, not my special rum. That's my f***ing rum, and I'm tired that you're using it. I don't know whose rum it is, I'm drinking it. Yeah, so you are not paying for it, so you really don't care. I'll drink as much as I want. Do you? Are you sure? Why don't you just leave me alone? Yeah? You gonna drink it? Yeah? You gonna drink it? Huh? You gonna drink it? Huh? Drink it? Drink it all! You finish the f***ing bottle! You wanna drink it? I don't want it all then! Huh? Yeah, you don't want it? What the f***? You gonna drink it? Drink it all! You finish the f***ing bottle! You wanna drink it? You gonna drink it? Drink it though! You don't want it? I don't want it! You don't want it? Why don't you want to drink my own f***ing Drink it though! Drink it! Drink yeah? Drink it. Huh? Drink it. Drink it. No, off. off! Stop drinking my I'm tired of this! I'm tired of this! Okay? Don't drink my phone! Okay? Okay? Hey! Don't touch your rum. Yeah, that is the deal. You got it. Hey, is this is a joke for you. Here, man. What? What do you mean, what? <laughs> oh my god, this is a joke. Are you serious? This again? This again? What? Kid, this is my house. Oh my god. I do whatever I want in my house. Hey, something Shut up! Today. So what? What do you mean? Mean what? Do you have any problem if I scream in my own house? If I drink in my own house? If I do whatever in my own house? Oh my god! What? Dude, this is f man. Why are you always like this man? Shut, Shut up! Kid, you want to be a big man? Get out of here, find your own money, and go for it! Man, what the f are you talking about my own money, man? You yeah. drugs! And what is the deal? You are living because of those drugs! You are living because in this room because of those drugs! I ain't f living with this sh you want to be a big man? Yes, I do. Yeah. I do. Are you a big man? Oh, I am. Are you a big man? Are you? Oh, show me, kid. You want me to show, show you? me? Come on. Ooh, kid, I love that. Yeah. Really? You want to fight? You. Shut up. Come on. You gonna show me? Kid, you wanna fight? You wanna fight? You wanna be a big man? You want to be a big man? Leave me alone. You want to be a big man? Come on, kid. You want to be a big man? Take your stuff and get out of here. What the? You still with this guy, man? Like seriously, he's such a f***ing ass. Why the hell are you here with him? Get out. 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 Get from here you know what? you should do the same too how do you do this how do you 
how do you pull up the little How do you do it? See you later. Take care, Mom. Drink. You drink to look back. Or maybe you drink to be able to look back without it affecting you as much. One thing that one can know is that there is no rock bottom. It can always get worse. Oh, mother What the f got in that bag? I said, what the f you got in your bag? No, man. Answer his question. Give me your f bag. Washer and dryer, mm -hmm. camp shower. Okay. Um, computers. Okay. So wait, can I use Facebook? By all means. It's just up there and it's just around the corner. Okay, thank you. Oh, sorry. No, oh, not you, man. Just like trying to find some court documents and stuff, you know? No. Trying to find bed and your phone. So good luck with that. Thanks. Hey guys. Hey. What you guys doing? How oh, much? Check out the computer. It's about apparently all looking. No, I'm going to use the phone. You can use this one. Yeah? Yeah. Um, what are you doing? Not much. What's your name? Don. Andre. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Hey, did you see my papers there? My court documents? I mean, I've been looking for them for quite a while now. Oh, that's fine. Thanks. Yeah, I've got one last smoke. Did you want to share? Sure, okay. Okay, let's go. Go on. I'll look 
Hey man, did you see my court papers there? Like I'm looking for them, like I'm trying to get my daughter back and I got court coming up next week. Like this is really getting frustrating and stuff. Could you kind of help me out? No, whatever, that's fine, thanks. Feelings of rejection sweep through the cycle of yesterday and today. Adults, survivors, and grown children. It's only one of the roots of addiction, brought from the residential system and still today. Pain gives you much choice. Go back into hiding, hiding behind a high, or be strong and know the pain has a reason. Yeah. 
Dad. Hey. How's it going? Well, not really well. I don't know about you for a while. And I called you a couple of times. Did you want to see Andy? About that. My phone died and everybody I was with didn't have a charger or a portable charger at the time. And nobody could see Andy yesterday. Well, what I need from you to, like, to put together. And this is business, so don't screw it up. Okay. You got it? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. I'll oh. go see him today. Okay. After I'm done hanging with my new friend here. This is Don. Don is my dad. I believe. Hi. Hi. Okay, so what are you looking for though? Is, is it okay if we kick it downstairs or is someone down there right now? No, there's nobody using that room, so yeah, go for okay. it. Okay, then cool. Give you something to drink, but that little drank everything. But anyways, yeah, don't worry about my dad. He gives me and everything, but the chill. Yeah. Wow. Hey, Storm, what are you doing here? Hi, I lost some documents and I'm just wondering if you get here or not. Oh, you lost some documents? Documents about what? Yeah, I kind of need them to, to go to court to get my daughter back. Do you party? Mm, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. okay, cool. Let's get this party started then. Um, not, not like that. I, I, what is that? Oh, yeah, I may see something like that around here. Would you like to stand by and drink something? I'm not really trying to drink these days. Well, but you want your documents back, no? Well, I'm trying to get my daughter back, so... Yeah, so we should drink something and check it out if we can find the documents. <sighs> sure. Okay, come over, girl. Welcome. Wow, girl, I'm surprised to see you around. I miss you for a while. The, how many months? Like a couple months, eh? Would you like some drink? Uh, no. Well, come on, try a little bit. Yeah, that like much. Change, you know, I'm trying to get my daughter back and stuff. Uh, do you got a new boyfriend? No. Um. But not candy. But it's candy for your nose. But got a bill? I remember that you like a good coke. There is some coke in your room. No, I'm trying to show down my life and you know, I'm be serious about getting my daughter back. Oh. So, how that's going? My new friend, Don. We're gonna do this. Shit. We're gonna have some fun. Well, I need my court documents to get my daughter back to my court. Do you know what? We can have a kind of party together and then maybe I can remember what your documents are. <laughs> what about that? I'm, I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with this. I'm, uh, maybe you shouldn't do that. <laughs> so do you really think that you can change? I sure do. <laughs> <laughs> what made you think that you can do it? I believe myself that I can do it. No, that would that would be amazing if it happens. I mean, I've been straight for quite a while now. Yeah, but you know the thing. This is the best way to see you right now. <sighs> what about if I just make a couple lines and then you can try it? Check it out, the rocks. This is so cool. Come on. No, I, I'm not, no, I'm not okay no, with this. No, no, I'm definitely, I just, no. Okay, down a little bit. And... There we go. Okay, 
there we go. So, it's just the last step, and then we can start having fun. What about that? Don? It's not my Don. thing. Don. No, no, it wasn't this? my thing either until a week ago. But come on, Don. You need your documents for real. You want your daughter back for real. Yes, you do. So you have to learn how to be more friendly with people. Do you know that? Maybe later on I can help you all with found the documents. I'm just so busy right now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I see that. I'm missing, bro. Come on, just try it. No, wait, I think I'm okay. And maybe you can make me feel more happy. Do you know what I'm talking about? Come on, it's gonna be fun. Just try it. I would take one and then we can go from there to can take the other one. There's really good <laughs> here. What the <laughs> What the <laughs> is this? I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. That's my What the <laughs> you do about it, man? Fuck off. Oh. What the <laughs> here? I just <laughs> do it, I swear. I, I'm, my name is Don. Oh Yo, I don't give a f man. Do you know where you are right now? Um, no, Do you know where she just tried to have you in? Get the yeah. f here, man. Get out of here, out the window. Hey. This is, man. Out! Cool. Not really forgiving. You will. Uh, do you know where you are right now? I do, I'm sorry. No, you don't. Yes, I do. do you know what they'll do to you? No, I don't. She was. I swear to you. Doesn't matter. Go home. I don't have a home. Andrea! Dad! What's up? You wait for here, okay? Wait a minute. Andrea! Dad! What the hell? What happened? Here. I told you to not let that dude in. Get in. I didn't let him in, Dad. Here. He came through the window, though. But how? Why do they even call me leaving? And where's your friend? No. Star. What the hell? Where's she? She, she give her the documents, no? We were taught to me. Don't play those games. What the hell do you have done? How many times do I have to tell you don't get involved in my business? You told her where the documents was, no? Don't get involved in my sh Got it? Fuck. Sh
she was pronounced dead, lost in the river. She is not alone. Among many other Aboriginal women, I sometimes imagine her coming back to me. But then reality hits. And it hits hard. The emotions overcome me. The road of my life hasn't been easy. I wasn't handed or born into the best life. But I'm on the path of healing. I'm learning as I'm going. Learning to let go. And to be okay with what I was given. It's hard. But learning to deal with things is something else. They say addiction is a struggle, but trying to survive from nothing into something is the real battle. It takes courage, it takes sacrifice.
They didn't have it easy. Our parents were raised by their parents. They weren't perfect. They were survivors of residential schools. Life. Life is always going to bring you down. You can't give up. You just got to keep moving forward. Even if the end is miles away. Freedom. Now you have the power. You are free to be yourself. You struggled with addictions. You fought with the system. You leave people and places for freedom.